In this video, we're going to show you how to label or annotate points that contain GIS attribute information. In a previous video, we showed you how to set up a field code table. This code table is very simple in regard to the fact that it only has one code, but in that code, it defines GIS attribute parameters to place specific symbols on specific layers based upon the values of those attributes. If you haven't already watched that video, I encourage you to do so. If we use this field code table the way it is, you will see that it draws manholes on sewer layers with different covers based upon the values of the attributes. In this case, a square or round cover places sewer manholes that are sanitary or stormwater or electric all based upon the value of those attributes. The next thing we're going to do is add the attribute value information to the CRDB file that contains these points. We had mentioned in an earlier video that we are using the CRDB format which allows us to do that. If you are not using the CRDB format and are using the CRD format, you will still be able to complete these exercises it's just that you will need to maintain that VTT file that was created in ServCE. So to import that data, we temporarily switch to our full GIS module. And in the GIS data pulldown, you will see a feature for a point GIS editor. When we open that up, we are allowed to import ServCE GIS attribute data. Now remember that VTT file comes from the data collector if you're running ServCE or ServPC. It contains the attribute data for the points that were located in the field. So we select this point and incidentally it will always have the same name as the CRDB or CRD file that you are using when you created the job. When I open that in it updates five points, I hit OK, and there is the attribute data now associated with the point numbers. When I exit that and double click on any point, you will now see a GIS tab that shows the attribute and the value contained for every one. We are now going to use that data to further advance our FLD file to create point labels and annotations. So I'm going to switch back to the survey menu. In the survey, I'm going to go right into field to finish and edit my codes. Again, I find my manhole feature code, edit that, and I'm going to look at my options. We already have our GIS set up, so I'm going to look at the options for annotating these attributes. You will notice first that the attribute format is defaulted to attribute block. I'm going to modify that to a text attribute. To control the attribute labels, you use this GIS note point attribute labels. The default labels contained from the point data are the point number, northern easting elevation description. I'm really not going to display the point number or the elevation on these. You can if you want to. I'm going to concern myself with just the description. This is the location of the piece of text that's going to be next to the point, and I happen to like the lower right. Text size scalar. I'm going to reduce the size of that a little bit. And before I worry about the layer that you see here, one of the options that I like for my labeling is to always have M text. So I'm going to create M text and use that option. And then this grays out the other layers. And this will be my layer for labeling my manholes. And I'm going to say util.txt. Now how we use, how we make sure that we label these attributes the way we want is all contained in this part, the middle part of this dialog box. As you can see, there it says attributes and notes. It defaults to all, which means it will take any point note that you put in the field and add it. What we want to do is change that to selected so we can control which attributes will be labeled and how we want to label them. And then we hit add. And we have three options, label by sequence, which will just label notes in the sequence they happen to be entered into the field, or we can name them. We can also do an equation. There are other videos that show how I make use of that. When we had originally set up our GIS attribute and feature file, we had created 
two attributes. They were service and cover. So the name of this, the attribute, is service. The value is what will be displayed on the screen. Text size, again, I want to be 0.08. This is going to be included in the M text, so they would all be together, so I really don't have to worry about these other layers. You can set those if you want. But I'm going to add a prefix, and I'm going to call it the type. And again, I'm going to have that on lower right. Then I'm going to add another one. It was called cover. And my prefix for that is going to be shape. These offset values you see here, these offset scalers, are tell Carlson how far away the piece of text, or in this case the M text, which will group all these three together, will be placed away from the point. I have found through experience that point three is a very reasonable value for all of these offsets. So I'm going to set these to all to be point three. I don't want my text drawn at an elevation, so I'm going to turn off that option. When I hit OK, I'm going to save this accident and redraw my points. I now have the points drawn on the separate layers with the, the types of covers that I had described and a piece of M text that describes each one. For drafting purposes, Carlson Osler's tools in the draft menu. To move this text around, my go-to tool is the Move Text with Leader, which allows you to grab these points and leader them in as you see fit. Another method of labeling points is through the use of an attribute block. That is, a block that contains the attributes that ultimately become the descriptions of each point. Those descriptions will then contain the attribute values that were part of the GIS collection. Let's start with a blank drawing. Now I like to start with a small symbol at the coordinates 0, 0. That is the base point of this drawing or block that is critical because if you don't maintain that structure, it is possible to place the block offset from the point location itself. So I've drawn this little circle here and now I just go into the draw menu and under text you will see attributes and I'm going to define attributes. Now what I want on this is the description similar to what we previously did. So it's going to be the manhole and then I'm going to have the type of service and the type of cover. So I'm going to make sure that I don't use a description that is the same as any of the other attributes or the attributes contained in the block. So for description, my tag, I'm going to use just DSC and abbreviate that. I don't need a prompt because these were not going to be placed manually. They're going to be placed automatically through field to finish. And I don't want a default. It's important that you leave the default blank. The insertion point, I am going to specify that on the screen. And the text height, I'm going to put that at 1 because it'll then be scaled by the scale factor in Carlson uh, that is a relative to the scale factor of the drawing. So I'm going to put the first one about here. I'm going to repeat that command and I'm going to take the option align below previous attribute definition and I'm also going to say lock the position. So this tag would be for the service. I'm going to put F S R V again leaving the prompt the default blank. One more time, I am going to put CVR, again a line below. Then I simply save this to an external block. I am going to call this MH-NO. I am now going to add that new block to my symbol library. Under settings, go to symbol library. I'm going to create a new custom category, top level category called custom. I'm going to import that symbol, MH Anno. It copies it locally. I should maybe say yes to that, and there is my block. Save that and exit. 
Now we're going to go back into Field to Finish and set this up. It's a very similar method of setting it up as we had done previously with text. We are going to change the attribute format back to attribute block. For a symbol, I am now going to select from the custom menu this manhole annotation block. The simple size scalar, I'm going to make that 0.08. Now I click on custom attributes. A blank custom attribute display appears, and to populate that with the attributes that we just created, you hit Find Custom Attributes. You will see the description, the service, and cover all appear. For the value, we can hit the Set button. Now what we're going to do for the parameter on the description is simply use the description from the point itself, which matches the one previously done, which would be Manhole. For the value for the service, we are going to use GIS by name, and that name, of course, is service. For the cover, again, we're going to use GIS by name, and that was called cover. Now, in each one of these options, you will see we have a prefix and a suffix. This is going to come out to say manhole, so I don't need one. But to be consistent with the previous example, I'm going to say service and the cover, say shape, and hit OK. Now, because we've chosen to use a custom block, that conflicts with our previous GIS setup. Because the previous GIS setup had chosen specific blocks for each type based upon the attribute, that's going to conflict with the idea of bringing in a custom attribute. So in the GIS setup, all the previous parameters need to be cleared out. And also, I would prefer not to have both the point block and the custom block, so I'm going to change the attribute format to none instead of attribute block. And the symbol, if you recall, we had just created a little circle there. I'm going to add a second symbol for a manhole for my regular manhole symbols. I'm going to save, exit that, and there is my option of labeling with attribute blocks. Similar to moving text with leader, Carlson also gives you a, a command to move attributes with a leader that functions basically the same way.